Greetings, humanoids of the internets. My name is Bob, and this is episode number 152 of Journey into Space. Journey into Mother Freaking Space. Uh, what we're going to do today, this time, is uh, we're going to send these guys back. I've already got everybody loaded into the bus here, into the Albatross shuttle, uh, and we're going to go back to uh, Kerbin. Uh, unlock your brakes. And we'll just get going. Uh, let me see. I'll turn on RCS if I need to. No, I don't need to. Vectoring is enough for me. And off we go. Okay, we're heading up to our Apoapsis and we're going to do a circularization burn. Let's stay into orbit about Route Minmus. Uh, and then we're going to head on to Kerbin. And we are there. Let's ooch it up a little bit. And... Good enough. There we go. Orbit's a little crooked, but I don't really care. Actually, well, I'm, I'm not going to be aligned with uh, the normal orbit with Kerbin. The, the, the alignment plane of Minmus and, and Kerbin are different anyway, so it doesn't matter. I don't have to align nothing. Well, I have to align some stuff when I get to Kerbin. If we want to land back at the Space Center. Uh, is this the way I should be going? Probably not. I'm trying to think of which way is the, the optimal direction to go here. Okay, this may not be ideal, but it's good enough. Uh, and probably, ideally, we should have been uh, moving uh, prograde into the orbit here instead of retrograde, or whatever the hell it's called. Uh, let's see. Move the maneuver. I figure this way, Minmus gravity may slow us down a bit. I also tried different options around this orbit, and this is probably the best one we had. We should have loads of fuel in any case. All right, goodbye, Mimus. Okay, we're going to come in uh, to, towards Kerbin and uh, do an arrow breaking. Uh, I don't want to arrow break much uh, because, uh, uh, nope, that's an encounter with the moon, the mun. 
Well, what does that do for my, uh... Hold on, hold on. That's 10 million. Uh, that's actually a path going through the moon. We don't want that. And are we still going through the moon? I do believe so. I'm liking what it's doing for, for my orbit around Kerbin, though. That's too many fucking markers here. That's down to one million. Uh, now we got a periapsis around the moon. That's good. Up oh, now the periapsis around Kerbin is uh is more. Yep, 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 yep. No, don't go away. All right, we're gonna have to live with that, and um, we'll do a do a, um, a slingshot maneuver around the the um, the Mun, and um, and uh, then uh, do the uh, course distance for the air breaking after that. Well, that actually does give me quite a. Um, significant gravitational assist on the order of about 5 million uh, kilometers distance uh, in the uh, between the two periapsises between the periapsis with moon a counter and without it why is the clock going all yellow here Also, I didn't realize this this month this mission has been four months long. Gotta do something right quick. F five. All right, so we got a um, Mun periapsis there. 1.2 million there. Oh, that is very workable. Uh, what I'll do is once I get um, past the Mun, I'm going to uh, uh, do further modifications of uh, my orbit. In fact, I probably will do modifications of my orbit uh, like around here first in order to bring it into the same uh, same uh, plane as uh, the Mun and Kerbin. Okay, making mid-course correction to get into a uh, closer to the same plane as uh, the Mun and Kerbin. Well, that's enough government work. All right, our uh, Mun apoapsis is now 308. Uh, Kerbin apoapsis, uh, periapsis is uh, down to 919. So, and that looks almost level, not quite, but close. All right. Hello, Mun, what you know?
Oh, we'll go and pop on through the app waps the periapsis here. Yeah, see uh, here. Um, uh, for those not familiar with gravitational assist, the the um, moon's gravity is pulling me this way, uh, and that is making my periapsis uh, uh, at Kerbin smaller. So it is essentially the same as if I was applying thrust in that direction. All right, let's go on. And now once I get out of this uh, right there, I'm going to have to uh, apply some more thrust to get this periapsis down uh, to air breaking range. I'll hit retrograde. Actually, we'll go ahead and make a maneuver. No, forget that. Go and make a maneuver. And so I'm thinking, uh, get the periapsis down to like 58. Now I'm willing to expend some fuel uh, to uh, to bring the the orbit the rest of the way down rather than burn up, you know, or or land in an un unprogrammed place. Uh, so I am willing to spend some f amount of fuel for that. Uh, 57. I like that number. I think that looks good. Let's head to our maneuver. It is going to take a reasonable amount of fuel, but, I mean, we've got lots, so. No worries. No worries, man. No worries at all. Uh, 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 uh. All right. Burn time, it says, is 21 seconds. Probably should always take that with a grain of salt. All right. For for this kind of maneuver, you don't have to be exactly at the at the maneuver point. This will be close enough. Perhaps it's at 57.9. Okay. Go ahead and turn pro raid. Although I'll probably have to adjust it once I get there. Now comes the challenging parts where we have to air brake and then do the re-entry. Alright, close enough. I didn't arrive at this uh, air braking alt uh, altitude at, with any kind of great scientific process. I just, you know, from experience doing air braking at Carbon, I figured that was going to be about right. I could be totally wrong. I could be utterly, tragically wrong. Okay. Get to in prograde again. Uh, now, the space shuttle um, uh, did a re-entry on its belly. Um, that was because you know they they wanted to have the uh, have like one side that was for the 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 super high value heat shield tiles and the rest rest of the, the uh, shuttle could use less uh, uh, heat protection. Uh, in this case, all the parts of all the parts are are of the same 
um, degree of heat protection, so it doesn't actually matter. Uh, I could still do belly in if I wanted to um, to shed more speed. Uh, that also probably would put more stress on the airframe. So I'm just going to nose in. Whoops. Uh, let me change my view. There we go. Okay, we'll just keep it in prograde for right now. And there are parts here that could possibly pop off. Not not likely now, but uh, possible during re-entry. Uh, that they could pop off, cook off, whatever you want to call them. Uh, in other words, they would get too hot and burn up. Um, like, I don't know what the, the heat tolerance is of this docking port. There's other parts here that could uh, easily uh, decide to cook on the re-entry. Uh, we'll just have to take that as it comes. Shit, F5. Well, it's probably too late. Pro that's not, probably not a good spot to do it. Do an F5, actually. So it's about, by, th by this point, it's kind of too late to, to massively change your uh, your um, trajectory. Actually, that was a bad F5. Oh well. Hopefully, everything works out. I think this. Uh, I think this rental will be fine, though. Nose is getting a bit toasty. Come on, baby. Uh, no little heat warning so far. Seems to be confused as to which direction it's going now. All right, so that was just a very uh, mild little uh, error wrecking. Let's see what that did for my... Uh, that didn't do a whole lot. All right, well, we're just going to have to um, bring it in manually. Yeah, the apps is there is out out practically out of the moon, so that's not good. Actually, I'm going to go ahead and um, shift to uh, afterburning engines on this because I got some oxygen. Uh, let's see, that's three. Nope. Uh, four. There we go. That increases the thrust uh, at the price of uh, a bit less efficiency. Switch the mode back. 
Uh, what we're actually going to do is we're going to bring the periapsis back up again. Uh, otherwise, I'll start re-entering on the next uh, go-round. Uh, and then I can um, better um, bring this down. I could do much more of this with uh, air breaking, but I've got the fuel, so... Let's go maneuver. Okay, I'm going to save the rest of my oxygen for uh, if I need to do a little maneuvering in the atmosphere. Um, that's best for the afterburner of the um, the nuclear engine. All right, let me get the let me start fiddling with the orbit a little bit, get it down to um, to the right size and the right inclination, and we'll be right back. Okay, we're heading up on our node uh, node to start our reentry burn. I always um, uh, overshoot, or, un or rather undershoot the landing uh, at the Kerbal Space Center. So I'm intentionally kind of overshooting it. Uh, and hopefully that'll put me right at the same base, best place, but uh, we shall see. And also I have to remember that I am on these nuclear engines, so uh, without the afterburner, so um, uh, I need to take that into consideration as far as my available thrust. You know what? That's good enough. We may risk very much overshooting it, but you know. My experience is that I always um, undershoot it. Uh, so if I try to overshoot it a bit, perhaps that will uh, get me to the right spot. Let's go ahead and turn prograde. F5. I'll be willing to bet your money that I overshoot it again anyway. Okay. I have nothing to do but re enter. Rondorf and Thormdorf, Thomdorf are our uh, pilot and co pilot. They seem pretty happy now. They have not been happy uh, at all times uh, in previous uh, maneuvers, but uh, they seem pretty darn happy now. Uh, Baumdorf doesn't have really great views, so I'm not sure why they're so happy. They can't see shit. They just like weightlessness, I guess. Well, that's going to change here in just a minute. And I think I may have lost some uh, RCS thrusters in, in a, a previous heating episode. Uh, so um, if we have to maneuver, that may be a problem. I still have the ones in the back. No, no, we, I, got, I still got them all. It's my center of mass. They're, they're placed for the center of mass being sort of around here. So how well that works now, I don't know. Because the center of mass is going to be different. And, uh... Let me see. Where's my fuel weighted? 
probably was is not the best time for me to actually figure this out. Go ahead and weight it forward a bit. Okay. I looks like I might actually overshoot it this time after all. Go ahead and go into afterburning mode in case I have to do maneuvers once I get uh, uh, down the atmosphere. And get a little toasty. Yeah, it'll be a miracle if I don't overshoot it this time. Thermal problems thus far. Come on, bring her down. Once the uh, intensity of the uh, reactor heating dies down a bit, I'm actually going to uh, flop onto my belly. Whoops. Uh, I don't know what that is, but it can't be good. I'm going to flop onto my belly now. Yep, overshooting the space station. Space, space center. Heating has died down a bit. Why am I raising out? I don't want to bounce off the atmosphere. No, 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 no. I don't want to bounce off the atmosphere. RCS on. And bouncing off the atmosphere. Uh, almost out of from auto propellant, so let's go ahead and to try to turn faster. I don't know where were they any, but it sure as hell is the Kerbal Space Center. All right, let's turn off the air brakes. Okay, about to run out of oxidizer. Go 
Karen. Go for it here. Okay, it's got to change mode. No way we're going to be able to fly all the way back to the Kerbal Space Center. It's just not, not feasible. But we'll get close to land here and uh, do the best we can. I may have actually transferred too much uh, fuel. Feel a little nose heavy. And the efficiency of these um, nukes is, is terrible in the atmosphere, so I need to try to stay as high an altitude as I can. And I'm going to be running out of liquid fuel, so let's go ahead and just head for whoop, 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 head for the nearest point of land. up because I'm sure that my um, yeah my impulse is dropping still pretty good but uh, you know I the lower it gets the worse my ISP is going to be and I don't have a whole lot of liquid fuel left Might make it to land, we'll see. Uh, ISP is still okay. I mean, not like it is in space, but it's still reasonable. But we're about to be out of liquid fuel. And then we're a glider. Yep, we're a glider. Could try aiming for this, but then I'd have to maneuver. I would lose velocity doing that, um, and that's not. There's not much land there to land on, so we're just gonna go straight ahead. Hope for the best. Hope we get to land. <coughs> now our surface speed is dropping all the time. Uh, it's just not uh, encouraging, and I'm gonna have to nose it down some more. If we have to, I believe we can successfully ditch in the water. Uh, that's not obviously not a uh, optimal end, but I mean it's a survivable end in theory. And I actually do have parachutes up here as part of the abort system that I could uh, use. If I had to. But we're going to try to land this bitch. Uh, we're not going to make it. Alright, we're diverting over here. Some little fishing village somewhere is going to get landed with a big old shuttle on their front lawn.
Oh, it's actually a little bulky. Wish I had a drop of fuel, but I don't. And we're not going to make it. Which is fine. I'll just, you know, go get as low as slow as I can. Um, hit the air brakes, hit the drogues, and hit the parachutes. I have prepared for situations like this. Boy Scout motto, be prepared. Be prepared for having to ditch in the ocean. Okay, we're still going 121. Our nose is pretty well down here. All right, got closing on a thousand meters. Okay, so the sequence of events is going to be hit the air brakes, hit the drogues, and then hit the parachutes. We're about to stall. There was no damage. <coughs> Basically, there was no damage. I didn't even have to, have to hit the main parachutes. I didn't have time to hit the main parachutes. I just hit the air brakes and the droves. All right, you're down safe, boys. Not exactly where you planned on being. But you're down safe. Why are we still moving? Uh, cut drugs. Okay. All right, our boys are all safe. Our boys and girls are all safe. I think Arlong is a girl. Yeah, Arlong is a girl. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six back from uh, from uh, Minmus. That's pretty cool. All right, that's all for right now. Until next time, hasta la vista. Adios. And now for another exciting episode of Jebediah Kerman, Air Ace. Uh, he is now testing out his uh, Midnight Special 6, which I need to save. Uh, and with the hope that this will be the aircraft that allows him to do a double loop around the, uh, the nerd tunnel. Jebediah, are you ready? He is ready. This is just a test flight. We didn't want to put the parachute. He didn't want to put the parachutes on, but we rather insisted that, that was important for safety. Jebediah Kerman testing the Midnight Special Six. <laughs> this is rather less power than what Jebediah is used to. That's quite a lot less power than what he's used to. Let's see how it maneuvers here.
It maneuvers like a sack of shit. <laughs> oh fuck! No 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 no! Fuck! I'm bored! I'm bored! I'm bored! I'm bored! I'm bored! I'm bored! I'm bored. Oh, that really maneuvers badly. All right. Well, the midnight special will have to be uh, six. Will have to be redesigned. Uh, and that's all for right now. Until next time. Hasta la vista. Adios. Oh, also, uh, uh, I, I was watching some of my old videos, and I noticed that Jeopardy Kerman Air Ace was a recurring feature. So I'm going to go ahead and bring that back. All right. Bye bye.